Microplastics are small pieces of plastic less than 5 mm long. Microplastics come from several sources. Direct sources that release microplastics directly into the environment and more indirect sources that release bigger plastics which deteriorate with time into microplastics. An example of a direct source is the use of the cosmetics industry of small pieces of plastic called microbeads for scrubbing and other effects. Microbeads are also found in many kinds of toothpaste. Due to the nature of their use, they often end up being flushed out with wastewater, and because they are so small, they are often not filtered out and end up in the ocean. An example of an indirect source of microplastics is deteriorating bigger plastics in the oceans. These sources include clothing, industry, fisheries, plastic packaging, and much more. When the plastic litter ends up in the ocean, they slowly start breaking down into smaller pieces, ending up as microplastics. This can be a problem for several reasons. Fish and other marine life can consume the microplastics, thinking it is food. Though some species can excrete the microplastics, other marine life cannot, resulting in a stomach full of microplastics. Several studies have found microplastics in the stomachs of around 30% of the fish around England and Denmark. In such cases, scientists have observed that fish can effectively starve themselves by not eating because of all the plastic in their stomachs. One study has shown that young fish actually prefer microplastics to real food, causing problems in their growth. Another point of focus is that the microplastics are essentially toxin sponges. The plastics have the capacity to absorb toxins from other pollutants in the water, which they can then slowly release as they make their way into the system of marine life or eventually people. All in all, there is a general lack of studies in the area, with some of the studies facing criticism from other scientists. Other scientists claim that the conditions under which the research is done is simply too extreme to be representative of real conditions. However, there is a general acknowledgement from the scientific community that microplastics are a problem. The scale of the problem, though, is under debate. Several samples from the oceans have revealed a far lesser concentration of microplastics than was to be expected with the known plastic pollution of recent years. Hypotheses about the lack of plastics range from fish eating them, the plastic sinking to the bottom, and the equipment simply not being able to catch the smaller pieces of plastic. This does not mean, however, that the problem isn't there. One study shows that microplastics reach 500 pieces per liter of seawater at the most polluted places. The EU has yet to make any legislation on the area of microplastics. Several bans and limitations of bigger plastics are being implemented around the world, which will eventually also limit the amount of microplastics from indirect sources. Direct sources of microplastics, such as microbeads and cosmetics, are not being limited on an EU level. Several countries, including the US, Canada and the Netherlands, have to some degree banned the use of microbeads. The EU is waiting for results from several studies to know how and where to work against the release of microplastics. But what can you do? You can look for ingredients like nylon, polyethylene and polypropylene. If these names are in the ingredient list, the products contain microplastics. Some NGOs have also made lists of products containing microplastics. For example, an NGO called Beat the Beat has a list on their website where you can see which products contain microplastics specifically in your country.